Every content creator is looking for the perfect camera to take both photos and video at a good price. So I've had the Sony a7 IV for about three months now and I'm having a bit of a love-hate relationship with this camera but it's mostly love. I was on a photo shoot with my friend Victoria recently in Bali so I'll be rolling some photos and videos as we talk about the great, the good and just the downright annoying things about the Sony a7 IV. The Sony a7 IV is definitely a very good photography camera. It's a pleasure to use and it's just so easy to get good photos. But I also think it's pretty easy to get a good photography camera nowadays. There's some very nice cameras coming out and also APS-C cameras are great photography cameras. The a7 IV is perfect for photography but not perfect for video but still amazing at video at the same time. It has a 33 megapixel sensor. That's actually super important for photo and video. 33 megapixels is a very sweet spot. It allows you to really crop in and also use APS-C lenses on the a7 IV. And I'm not worried about losing quality. It's definitely in the middle ground between photography and video. Bang in the middle perfect megapixel size sensor. Another thing that I love about the Sony a7 IV is the 10-bit 422, making S-Log3 very usable and very similar to the Sony a7S III and FX3. This is super important if you want to match cameras. There's also some really nice conversion LUTs designed for the a7S III to get like an RE look. Phantom LUTs is one of them and they work on the a7 IV beautifully. The custom buttons and the overall layout of this camera is something that I really love and you can change it between photo and video so you can have different custom buttons for each. For example there's no reason for me to have manual focus for photography but I use manual focus a lot in videos so why would I have the same custom button set up for both photo and video? I love that about the Sony a7 IV and also when you change between photo and video it keeps your settings the same so your photography settings don't carry over to your video settings making it like a super easy workflow to switch between the two. The autofocus is great, it has a flippy screen, massive fan of that, it has really good IBIS that when you pair that with Final Cut Pro stabilization you get really nice smooth footage. The 4K is different from most cameras because it's down sampled from 7K. So basically that just means that it takes a 7K image or file and then it down samples it to 4K resulting into like a more detailed 4K than you'll normally see on normal 4K cameras. The last thing I love about this camera is the price. 2500 USD for a camera that can shoot in S-Log3, 4K60, 33 megapixels, takes great photos and videos. And also if you choose a Sony system, you can choose cheaper third-party lenses like Sigma, Sanyang and Tamron, Viltrox. There's a whole bunch of different lenses out there. They're super good. Super fast autofocus, very sharp, and much cheaper than the Sony lenses. These are the things that I do not like about the a7 IV and they are so annoying. The first one is the 4K60. I didn't actually think that was going to be a massive problem until I started shooting weddings on a 24 to 70. I need those 24 millimeter wide shots at 60 frames per second and it crops it down from a 24 millimeter to a 35. I like the look of 35 but I just need that wide shots. Which actually brings me up to my next point. I end up just shooting in 1080p at 60 frames per second so I can use the full frame sensor and a 24 millimeter is still going to be a 24 millimeter. Now the problem with that is that sometimes it just goes from 10 bit to 8 bit and that's super annoying because I just shoot an S-Log3 and if I shoot an S-Log3 using the 8-bit codec 
basically my footage is useless. Like you can't use 8-bit codec for S-Log3. So that's something that's super annoying and I gotta keep an eye on. I know there's ways around this using SNQ mode. I know that 1080p at 120 frames per second is the most annoying one where you really have to make sure you are because it just automatically switches. I just wish there was a way that I could switch off 8-bit so never go into 8-bit and if I can't use that resolution and frame rate with 10-bit, don't allow me to go in that resolution and frame rate. I said this camera is perfect for photography and there's just one issue and it's not really Sony's fault. And that's the raw files. The raw files are useful in Lightroom and Photoshop, but that's really about it. My workflow, I use Nanorative Select, and I have to shoot in JPEG plus raw just so I can select my photos. This is also true with a MacBook, because if you go in the folder, you can't actually like preview what photos you're taking. So basically you have an SD card with a bunch of photos and you can't organize it. Super annoying, it's not really Sony's fault. MacBook and Narrative Select just need to catch up. This camera's been out for a couple months, like surely it's gonna get fixed soon. The next point is something that actually hasn't happened to me. I shoot mainly in Australia. We live in a very hot climate. We get plus 30 degree days all the time. I was in Bali shooting 4k 60 the whole time and I've never had the camera overheat but other people have which is a big concern for me because if I'm at a wedding ceremony and my camera is overheating and the bride and groom is about to walk down the aisle I'm toast. So I need to be really careful of that. I wish there was a way to monitor how hot the camera was getting before it overheated. So that's definitely something to look out for. It actually hasn't happened to me. Like I shoot in super hot climates, 4K 60, 10 bit, S-Log free for over an hour and hasn't overheated. So hasn't been an issue for me. The last one is basically all mirrorless cameras get this and that's rolling shutter. Now rolling shutter just warps the image side to side where if you use like something like red rolling shutter or a global shutter, you're not gonna get that issue. It's not really a problem. It's just something that all mirrorless cameras have and you just need to be aware of it. So is the Sony a7 IV the right camera for you? Just for video, maybe you should be looking at the Sony a7S III or FX3. If your budget doesn't allow that and you have the budget for the Sony a7 IV, go get it. It's an amazing camera, great lens options, 4K 60, 10 bit, S-Log free, you can't go wrong. There's also the option to get the Canon R6 that also shoots at 10 bit 4K 60 but without a crop and that's actually a 20 megapixel sensor which would be better for video. And just for photo, I mean yeah it's a great photography camera, it's pretty much perfect but so is other cameras. I released a video on the Sony a6600 which we're filming on right now for photography so I'll leave that up there if you guys want to check that out. I also did a comparison video between the a6600 and the a7 IV for both photo and video. You guys can check that video out, out right here or you can subscribe for more. We'll see you next time.